Hey, this is Tao at the MTG Forge, and today I'm going to be talking about a commonly known cheap deck called Zombie Hunt. Now, Zombie Hunt is a deck that basically uses a little quirk of some cards to get a very quick advantage. It's a little bit of a glass cannon, but I think today I'm going to show you a way to maybe make it a little bit surprising and a little more fun to play. Now, let's just go over the basics of the deck. Uh, the deck basically centers around two cards, Treasure Hunt and Zombie Infestation. Essentially, what you're going to do at the beginning of the game is you're going to mulligan cards until you get a Treasure Hunt in hand, which is pretty common, but if you don't, you want to go all the way to one and, and just hold there. Okay, and then hopefully you'll draw it. If you don't draw it, you might just lose the game. But it's actually fairly common to get the Treasure Hunt, and this, this deck mulligans really, really well. Afterwards, what you do is you cast your treasure hunt, and what that does is it allows you to draw lands until you draw a non-land card. But most of your deck is just all lands, so you're just going to draw a crap load of lands. And then what you can do is play your zombie infestation and discard those lands to make extra zombies. Now, you're going to have a ton of lands in your hand, which is going to make you discard them just because you can't have more than seven in your hand at the end of turn. So what we're going to do is we're also going to play a four of Reliquary Tower. Now, a four of Reliquary Tower allows you to have an unlimited amount of cards in your hand, so you don't have to discard them. So here's basically what an ideal game would look like. Turn one, you play an island. Turn two, you play a Reliquary Tower and cast a uh, Treasure Hunt. That's going to draw you a whole bunch of cards and either get you another treasure hunt or a zombie infestation. Regardless of what you have, you're going to play a swamp on the next turn. Then, if you have a zombie infestation, then you're going to cast that using the swamp. And if you don't, you're going to use another treasure hunt just to get more cards until you get the zombie infestation, just to keep repeating this process. Eventually you're going to get so many cards in your hand, and then what you do is you wait for your opponent's turn. Do not do this on your turn. At your opponent's end step, you then discard all your lands to make zombies, which untap and don't have summoning sickness then on your turn. Then you can attack with them right out. Now, to make them a little bit stronger, we also have four of Contested War Zones. So then on your turn four, you play Contested War Zone, attack with all your zombies. During the attack phase, you tap Contested War Zone to make them all three twos and just swing and hopefully you'll just win right there. Right? If not, it creates an unbelievable board presence. Now, the only other card we have in the deck is a one of Boseju who shelters all, and that's in case your opponent has some counters, and you might just get lucky and be able to use that and make your spell uncounterable. You may not want to include Boseju because it costs 5.8 tickets, which is a huge cost compared to the rest of the deck. Overall, the whole rest of the deck can be built for less than one ticket, so if you're including Boseju, you're adding basically 500% to the cost of the deck. Now this deck is a lot of fun to play, but one of the problems is that it's kind of a glass cannon. If your opponent has any counters or any hate against this, you're just going to be dead in the water. Especially if you're playing blue, typically what they'll do is hold up a counter against you, wait for you to cast your zombie infestation, and then just counter it and put it into the graveyard, and then you just can't do anything. This presents a significant problem because essentially you're going to be stuck with a whole bunch of lands and just ways to find lands and you're not going to be able to do anything else where your opponent just destroys you. So a good question is, well, what can we do with the sideboard? And I really thought long and hard about this and I think I have an idea of something. Now, this isn't super strong, but it will take your opponent by surprise and usually your opponent will be playing a lot slower because they're just waiting for this zombie infestation to come out but it's actually not going to come out which is going to buy you some time to play your actual cards okay uh, this is what we're going to do first of all we're going to remove the zombie infestations and the treasure hunts and all four contested war zones we're not going to need them and we're not playing an aggro strategy anymore so instead what we're going to do is switch this to be a shared fate deck now to do this we're going to need four shared fates four dissolves, four fog banks, and three deprives. Now, I'm not sure about deprive. Uh, cancel might be a better one, but I think deprive might be the better one to go with. So it's up to you. But here's how it's going to work. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to play islands and reliquary towers just to make it look like we're still playing treasure hunt. That should give our opponent some pause and just allow them to wait for us to play our zombie infestation, but we're never going to play it. Instead, what we'll try and do is play fog banks, dissolves, or deprives um, until we can basically just hold up the game until we get to 5 mana. Once we play 5 mana, preferably when our opponent's tapped out, we're going to drop shared fate on them, and hopefully that's enough for us to win the game.
Now, one of the things that we need to do is if you're if the opponent's holding up mana still, you're going to need to hold up a deprive and a shared fate, and you're going to need to have seven mana to or just take your chances. Ideally, you'd have seven mana. You'd be able to drop your shared fate if they try and cancel it or counter spell it. Then you use deprive to counter their counter, and you get shared fate online. Now, from that point on, you're going to be playing with your opponent's deck. Now, the way you look at it in MTGO is you have to look at the exiled cards, and all the face-up cards will be the ones that you're allowed to go with. Now, one thing I noticed during playtesting is that a lot of players don't know how to find those cards. They don't know that they're sitting in the exile zone, so they just think that they don't have a lot of cards. Now, I think it's kind of a trolly move uh, to not tell them, but I always tell them. But I guess you could win the game by just not telling them where those cards are and then just not letting them play. And then they just think that they're just screwed and they might resign or whatever. Still, in the interest of fair play, I think it's the right thing to do to tell them that the cards are in the exile zone and then just play it out from there. Now, please, please, please do not use any bounce cards. Right? If you're, For instance, if your opponent has uh, something like a card with dash... Do not play it for its dash cost, because after you play it for its dash cost, it will return to its owner's hand, which is your opponent, not your hand. Okay, same thing if your opponent has like a remand or a cryptic command or something like that. If you use that, it will bounce the card back to its owner's hand. So don't do that. Same thing with Vapor Snag, anything like that. Okay, and then afterwards, you can use your opponent's own deck just to beat them down while they're stuck with your crappy deck with just fog banks and counters. Eventually, you're going to overwhelm them if their deck is good enough, or you'll just go to a stalemate. It always takes people by surprise, and it ends up being a lot of fun. So hopefully you like this idea. Um, let me know what you think of it. I think it's a good one, and I'll try and upload some videos of some gameplay footage. Once again, if you do like these ideas, and if you like the channel, please like and subscribe. It really helps a lot, and if there's something you'd like to see, feel free to put it into the comments. I'm always listening, and I always want to do better. So thanks for listening, and see you next time.